Donnie and Dolly. The team is supported by ableauctions.ca. Closing your business, we can help. Thursday, and all of our guests today, including Farhan Lalji, standing by, brought to you by the Vancouver Giants. WHL playoffs begin tomorrow night, Friday night, for the G-Men as they take on Everett down in Everett. They return to the LEC for Game 3 next Wednesday, Game 4 next Friday, April 5th. Puck drop for both games is at 7 p.m. Grab your tickets now at VancouverGiants.com. Slash tickets. The silver tips will be heavily favored oh, yeah. in that series, but keep in mind that was the same scenario two years ago in the first round, and the Giants uh, knocked them off. Uh, Farhan Lalzi joins us now from TSN down at Rogers Arena in the Canucks morning skate. How are you, sir? Good, gentlemen. How are you? Yeah, very good. Any any news from the Canucks optional morning skate ahead of their game against Dallas? Well, uh, Elias Lindholm is not out here, as you mm-hmm. probably would expect. Uh, no sign of Factor Demko. Dakota Joshua is here. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, kind of business as usual based on what we expected yesterday. Um, optional skate right now. So they've got about 10 forwards out here, including uh, Miller and Besser uh, among the, amongst others. And probably two or three defensemen down on the other side. They're just hanging around. So, uh, you know, they're doing a drill right in front of me because uh, I'm down here kind of uh, in row one. So if it starts getting loud because these guys are missing the net, yeah, you, you know where it's coming from. <laughs> So would you uh, expect Joshua to be with Miller and Besser tonight? Yeah, I think so. I, you know, Rick Talkett has shown that generally how he practices is how he lines guys up and, and plays. So uh, the fact that he was skating with Miller and Besser yesterday in a full practice as opposed to, you know, Pew Suter or whoever else might go there and somebody else being a placeholder and that type of thing, that didn't happen. So I, I would be surprised if Joshua doesn't play and play on that line tonight. What do you think Joshua's return means to the Canucks for him? Well, I mean, we saw how valuable this guy was before he got hurt, right? I mean, I joked with him yesterday about being the secret weapon. And if he could have ever imagined that, and he had a good laugh about that. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I, I think it's, uh, I, I think he's a big body and provides a physical presence. I don't think he's going to drop the gloves for a while here after what happened the last time. But, you know, the way this guy was playing, you know, he wasn't turning into just a grinder. He was turning into a guy that was going to trend as a legitimate top six power forward in the National Hockey League. Of all the guys... I've said this before, that the, that are going to be pending free agents for the Canucks, that's the guy I would prioritize signing. He would be at the absolute top of my list. And it's going to take him a while for him to get his hands back. But if you watch how he was producing mm-hmm. before, it, you know, it was goal scores type stuff. Like he had some guilty mitts, as they like to say. And again, it'll take him a, maybe a couple games to, to get that back. But I think this kid's got a lot to offer. Farhan, uh, Lindholm is not there, uh, as you just said. Uh, what's going on there? I mean, he's missed three practices a game. Uh, you know, w- w- what do we know about his injury, and how long could he be out? Yeah, I mean, we don't know a ton. A lot of us have kind of speculated it's sort of a hand-wrist type of thing, but we don't know that for sure. And uh, they've, they've managed to stay reasonably quiet about it, effectively quiet about it, and um, you know, Rick talking yesterday didn't sound like he thought it was going to be serious or long term, but admittedly, there are still some test results to, to come back. So, you know, you hope that when you get Elias or Elias Lindholm back, that he's the best version of Elias Lindholm because I don't think enough fans have seen that yet. And, um, you know, we've seen the team's profile better defensively with him in the lineup. He's good on face-offs. He's good in his own end, but we also want to see somebody that can produce offensively and hopefully when he gets back, he's in a better position to do that. All right, this is a, 10 games to go. Uh, the yeah. West is loaded. I mean, tonight's a big test. Uh, first place in the West on the line. What kind of game are you expecting? Well, I think we're going to see a lot more entertaining game than we saw against the Kings, don't you, right? Uh, yep. You know, this is a <laughs> Dallas can score. team that is Not deep. saying much. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, they've got seven 20-goal scores, right? They, they can do it from anywhere in their lineup, and the Canucks are going to have to be on their toes. There can't be a necessarily a favored matchup, right? I mean, yeah, they do have their best players, but every line, every matchup has got to be alert uh, tonight. And I, I think uh, I think it's going to be a great test for them. And, you know, this is not a game they can lose if they want to finish first in the West. You lose this game, you're three points behind, uh, you know, and it's going to be tough with tiebreakers and everything included with, with games running out here. So if they have designs on finishing first in the West, this is that game, you know. Um, uh, yeah, so like, like I said, I mean, uh, there is balanced a team – as there is in the West right now. You know, you look across the board, as good as Nashville is and as good as they're playing right now, 
uh, you know, they don't have their, that scoring balance throughout their lineup. You know, the Kings obviously are a, a different type of team entirely. You know, Edmonton, you've got your big four, you know, if you include Hyman in that group as far as forwards that are producing. After that, it gets really quiet, right? So, um, you know, even, even Vegas is trending in a different direction. This is one team that top to bottom, I don't even think Colorado can match their death. Hmm. Okay, Mr. Football, as we switch gears here, uh, just yeah. your opinion of the NFL's new look. And I know you're at the CFL scouting uh, combine. Great job there. But your opinion of the NFL's new look. I shouldn't say new look because the XFL was using it. But their yeah. new look kickoffs. I like it. You know, I think it would have been an easy thing to just try to eliminate kickoffs altogether, um, you know, in the name of safety. But they want to still have the excitement of the play with the run back there. And, you know, you also want to have value if you're a kick returner coming into the league. So I, I think it's a good thing. I hope eventually, you know, the CFL is having these discussions. I think the CFL is just going to kind of navel gaze for a year and continue to study it further. Uh, but um, I, I think this will be a good thing because if the NFL can do it, then it, it doesn't look as bad if this league does it. You know, and I know there are hardcore CFL fans out there that say, don't touch my my league yeah. and my rules and my return game. But this league's got to look at it too. And I, I think the NFL, uh, to do it in a safer way, I think is the right thing. I mean, you can always change it and reduce it and find a way to minimize it if this doesn't work. But I think the XFL gave us a pretty good idea and there shouldn't be so much ego that you're not willing to try what they tested. Yeah, I don't know if people got the idea there, but the kickers, Farhan, you tell me if I'm wrong, the kickers will continue to kick from the 35. Their 10 teammates yeah. will line, line up at the receiving teams. Well, we're seeing the 35 here, but the notes I have uh, say, say the 40. Bottom line, they'll be closer to the uh, uh, kick returner. And, and like you say, Farhan, this is about health, isn't it? About injuries. And, and getting yeah, I mean, possibly more, more kickoffs. Returns. Yeah, absolutely. Right. If you've got a if you've got a kick a kickoff team that's lined up at the forty, uh, with the with the guys blocking them at the thirty five, that first collision is not going to be at high right. at, at high speed as it has been previously. And now they don't even if they get past that blocker, they don't have the run up where they can build up speed and momentum before they get to the returner. So it will slow things down a little bit. And quite frankly, it might open up more returns. You know, some would say they're closer to it. It makes it harder to to set up schemes, but they're not going to be able to come at you with enough speed. So, you know, we'll see what it looks like. But, uh, you know, they, they're also setting up a target zone. Yeah. So they want the kick in play. They want a return. They, You know, they want to encourage you to not kick it deep and out through the end zone. So I think it's a positive. All right, Fran, I know you're busy. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, we appreciate it. All right, boys. We'll talk to you next week.